we wanted to sync with Firebase. We had created Firebase accounts. We'd gotten a, a database set up, although until you actually start syncing some data, it seems to just want you to have to recreate the database over and over again. Remember to start in test mode so you can actually read and write data. And I suggested that we use Rebase, which is a package from uh, Tyler McGinnis, who is also one of the authors of React Router, which we'll be using probably tomorrow, maybe the next day. Um, and see if we can get that to sync our state with Firebase. So we need to do a little bit of configuration first. Base.js here, already here. If you look at the readme, this is the readme for Rebase, down a bit on how to get started with create class, which accepts an initialized Firebase database object. So if you look at the code here, he has examples using require, which is not what we're doing, we're using import, but hopefully you can translate that. So he requires Rebase and Firebase, or in this example, Rebase Firebase app. Well, we did Firebase app, so that's probably the example we wanna follow. So we do need to import Rebase, so let's do that. We can import Rebase from read-base. We're already importing Firebase from Firebase app. Then we need to import Firebase database. Deal is Firebase includes a whole lot of modules. Um, if you just import Firebase from Firebase, that includes a bunch of stuff we don't need because Firebase, as you may recall, has a lot of services that we're not using. We are right now just using the real-time database. So uh, let's just import Firebase database, and then that will become available on the Firebase object we've already imported. And then we initialize the app. We're already doing that. We need a database, so call Firebase.database, passing in this app that we initialized. No problem. Let's do that. Const db equals, what did it do? Firebase.database, passing in that app. Firebase.database pass in app. Then they say base equals rebase create class with that out of that database. So const base equals uh, rebase dot create class passing in that Firebase database we made. All looks fine. And then, and this was a clue in the uh, homework assignment. Export default, the result of rebase.create class. So we could export default base, or rather than even saving it to a variable in the first place, just export default rebase.create class, whatever you want to do. If you want to name it base first, that is fine. Either way, same thing. So I'm also going to update my base.example.js since this stuff that I'm doing now doesn't actually get committed because we don't want our uh, API key and so on committed to our GitHub repository for the world to see. But there we go. I imported two new things. I can put these in a different order. Doesn't matter. I'm going to put... I'll put rebase at the end. Import Firebase, import Firebase database, and then import rebase from rebase. We are already initializing Firebase and the Firebase app. So now we initialize the Firebase database as well, and then set up rebase with that Firebase database link. And then we make sure we can uh, export that so that we can import it, import it in our actual React components and sync our data. So for that, we said use sync state, base.sync state, to sync your messages with Firebase. Here's sync state, allows you to set up two-way data binding between your component state and your Firebase. So whenever Firebase changes, your component state will change and vice versa. When the component state changes, Firebase will change. So make it change either place and it updates the other place. And it's the list of messages that we want to sync. So where is the list of messages? What component state? is the list of messages in. Chat, yep. Chat, state, messages, right here. That's what we wanna sync. So, 
Let me see who did this again. Who who got this done? All right, uh, what'd you do, Matt? Okay. Anybody else do it differently? Pretty much it. All right. So we need to import it, right? Let's go ahead and import uh, base from base. So base I named the lowercase because this is not a React component. So let's import that from there so we can use it. And all the examples in the README, um, they do it in component did mount and uh, unmount. So no wonder we tried to do it that way. So component did mount. We haven't talked about this yet. This is what's known as a lifecycle method. If you want something to Google, I think we can probably find that in the good old React docs. Uh, we already have the React docs open. Here we are under main concepts, state and lifecycle right there. Bring a function to a class, blah, blah, blah. Lifecycle methods. So lifecycle methods are the other main thing that keeps us from using stateless functional components. We said in order for a component to be a function instead of a class, it cannot have state, right? The other thing it cannot have is lifecycle methods because those are inherited from the constructor or excuse me, they're inherited from the parent class from uh, React component. So those are methods that will automatically fire at certain point in the component's life. So right before it's rendered to the DOM, right after it's rendered to the DOM, um, right when new, com uh, new props come in, when state changes, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can think of it as, as something that runs mostly either uh, right before the thing's created or right around the time the thing's created, either before or after, or right before or after the thing changes. And so those are well documented. Um, and they have names like component did mount, component will mount would be right before, component did mounts right after, component will unmount right before the component ceases to exist. Um, it's a little different than the constructor though um, because of how it, uh, all of these things run after the constructor, but in the case of like component did mount, that's right after render. So the page does draw before this runs. If you look at the actual documentation for this stuff, which I think is uh, right here, yep. You'll see in detail what all of these things are. And I think there's even, yep, here's a life cycle diagram as a cheat sheet. I'll give you a link to this in Slack. Don't forget this documentation is here, it is your friend. So here we go, mounting, updating, and unmounting. The constructor runs first, then comes render. So the page is actually drawn to the DOM. Then um, component did mount. So component did mount will run after the page renders for the first time. Updating, this happens when you get new props or when set state is run or when you force an update. And then render runs again and then afterward it will run component did update. And it'll pass in what state and props used to be so you can compare them to the, to the new ones to see if you need to take certain action based on a change to your props or something like that, which is something that we will have to do later. Unmounting, right before it unmounts, you'll get to call a lifecycle method. So since these are inherited from the parent class, all you have to do is add these methods to your class and they will automatically run at the appropriate time. So we said we we're gonna do this in, uh, what did, which one did you use? Uh, will Component will mount. Everyone used will mount, nobody used did mount, is that right? Did. You used did mount, okay. Um, any particular reason? Uh, okay. It's actually, that is actually what they, what they did here, isn't it? Component did mount. Component will mount, I believe, will actually give you a warning these days. Uh, let me check that real quick. So we're in chat JS. Why chat? Because that's where messages lives on state. So if I do component will mount. Yeah, deprecated. Um, 
The documentation these days tells you not to use component will mount and component will update anymore. They want you to use did. Um, so I suppose we'll avoid it. So how about component did mount? Uh, downside of component did mount is the page will have already rendered without the messages, but we can always put a little loading spinner in there or something like that if we wanted to. So truly, all you have to do is add the method component did mount, and it will automatically run at the right time. We don't ever have to call it ourselves. It automatically gets called at the right time because we inherited from the parent class, which we did, right? Yep. This is, in fact, a class that inherits from component, so it will work. So we call base.sync state. Base.sync state. First argument it receives is, uh, where is it in sync state? Endpoint, the relative Firebase endpoint to which you'd like to bind your component's state. Suppose we don't know what the heck that means. We can see that they want it to be a string at least. So how about we put a string in there? Pancakes. That should be fine. Then we'll at least see what happens. Second argument. There are only two arguments. The second argument is options, which is an object. So an object. Option one required. Also uh, an object context, the context of your component. This is all it means, folks. This. It means the component. The component whose state you want to sync this with. And that is nearly always going to be this. Option number two, state, oh, you have to put context. Because this is, an, this is a, the second argument here is an object. So context gets this. Next state, a string, the state property you want to sync with Firebase. In other words, this dot what? This dot messages. So you just tell it which property on state it's supposed to sync with. That's all. Default value, nah, it's optional. As array returns the Firebase data at the specified endpoint as an array instead of an object. Well, messages is an object or an array instead of an object, so that seems appropriate. So as array, we will put true. That what everybody did? Uh, anybody use any of the other options? I don't think we need any of them. This looks good. Okay. Let's see what happens. Cannot resolve rebase. That's fine. I'm not entirely. Oh, yeah. It was part of the homework to actually install this, right? So yarn add re-base. Hadn't actually done that yet on Thursday. Yarn add re-base. It was right there in the homework. The command that you needed to run. Very good. And occasionally you might find that you have to actually restart your server, kill and restart your server when you install new... Um, New packages. I'm not sure I actually had to do that, but I already killed my server, so I did. Now I'm still logged out because I already was. All right. Very beginning of the general room. I have no messages. Let's write a message. Day eight. Woo. Woo. Let's log out. Let's log in with somebody else. I too say woo. Let's see what happens. Let's, ref let's refresh the page. My messages are back. We did it. It's in the cloud. Let's go look at Firebase. Oh, look. I'm on the database tab under data. Look at this. Pancakes. And I see my messages. Okay, so now I, get, I think I get what the endpoint argument does. So I probably don't want to call, call this pancakes. Messages seems better. But that's the same as this. So to make the point that this determines how these are all scoped in the database, I started it as something else. But messages seems perfectly fine. So that first argument to sync state, sync state simply tells you what, what key this is stored at 
underneath uh, your Firebase database. And I think it says, uh, it doesn't say that here, but you could put slashes in there. Um, messages slash general, since this is the general room, and write some messages. And this is what it'll do. It'll add an extra key in there for every slash you put. Let's get rid of pancakes. There you go. Very nice. I don't know that you want to put slash general there, but yeah, why not? Get it. And it syncs, and it is just that easy. Now the messages are going to stick around between page loads. And we made the point that this is two-way data binding. I make a change in my UI. And it just shows up on Firebase. I make a change in Firebase. That change shows up in my app. It works both ways. What you do this weekend... Uh, uh, Chang, you do anything this weekend? Did you do anything this weekend? Okay. <laughs> Did anybody? <laughs> What'd you do, Troy? Oh, Troy went to a wedding. I made the change on Firebase. I come back. There it is in the chat room. Just like that. I didn't refresh the page or anything. It just happened. Happens super fast. And there we go. All of a sudden, we have data that's syncing with Firebase with this one simple call. Sync messages with Firebase using Rebase. Piece of cake. Questions about that? <laughs>